This is is Underground underground Office. Hello, friends, fans, family, and fiends of Underground Opolis. If you haven't joined the Fiends of Underground Opolis discussion group on Facebook, please make sure you do. It's a really good group. I've managed to keep all the spam out. There's, It's not just... It, it is about this show. However, it's not just about this show. Anybody can talk about anything they want in there. You, you, got, you got a show coming through? Put it in that page. You'll get results. Put it in that group. You'll get results. All right? Talk, got a new song coming out, put it in that group, you'll get results. It's a really it's it's been a really good group. And just one little quick local announcement. I'm gonna bring up Underground Opolis presents the ruckus. The ruckus at 21st in Germantown, 1481 South Shelby Street, Louisville, Kentucky. Kind of like my second home. I always say that. And the Ruckus will be there November Thursday, November 16th. We do it the third Thursday every month. This month, my guests are Limestone Band, local, local garage rock band from here in Louisville. And they've been causing up quite a buzz. And with, and then my buddy, Dustin Swagger, my guy I've been friends with for, for about eight, nine years now. And he, he's an acoustic guy. However, he is not your typical acoustic artist. He is metal as hell on the acoustic he really is he can scream he's he can sing and scream and he does it with an acoustic guitar <laughs> like he he really does it's really different and it's and every song is really good and he will be i'm sure he's going to be one of my guests soon on the show anyway i'm gabbing on like i always do got to remember this show is about my guests it's not about me but oh yeah one more time, 21st in Germantown, 1481 South Shelby Street, Louisville, Kentucky. If you don't make it to that event, make it to one of their others. They're, they they have events all the time, and they it's a really fun place. They got fantastic food, and I'm not saying that just because I'm close with those guys. They, they went all out on the food. They really did, and they got fancy little drinks that – the fancy little foo foo drinks, <laughs> but they've also got beer and stuff and, and like 90 something bourbons because you know it is Louisville, it is Kentucky. We got to got to drink all kinds of bourbon if you live here because we're right on the trail. Anyway, there I am going off again. I'm gonna bring my guest right on before I go off on another tangent. Introduce yourself. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me. My name is Jeremy. I'm with the band Core from South Dakota. Oh. I was going to ask where you all for, were from. Well, well, just get it right. Let's get right to it. I received the radio edit of Daydream Junkie. I'm going to need a copy of the NC-17 ver- <laughs> ver- 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 version, if there is one, by the way. Uh, there, there is. There's actually an acoustic version of it, too. Um, yes, I checked sto- that out, too. The story behind the radio edit is kind of underwhelming. Um the only difference between them is um, when we got hooked up with Pavement back in July, they fell in love with that song, felt really strong about it, um, but they wanted to chop it down um, for time to be mm-hmm. a little bit more fitting for radio format. So we chopped about a th- little bit less than 30 seconds off of it, um, which was primarily just a musical interlude after the second chorus, um, and then chopped the intro down a little bit so that we could get it right in at about that three minute mark, right. have the chorus pop a lot earlier in the song. Um, but there's not like a NC-17 or rated R version of that particular song. There's many <laughs> others that are, though. <laughs> What's your position in the band again? I'm the singer and the guitar player. You're that You're that fantastic singer. You guys are a three-piece. Yeah. You, you're putting a lot of work into a, into a show, then. You're putting a lot of work into a band. It's three pieces hard. I've done it. Yeah, it, it is, but... I mean, I, I, the principal writer and I produce everything too. So oh, wow. we, our last album we did here um, and we're really obsessed with kind of paying attention to what the other instruments are doing and, and making sure the bass is filling out areas that the guitars are and that the drums are filling up spaces that aren't going to step on the bass tracks. And then also very, very uh, aware of the relationship between the bass guitar and the kick drum and the, and the snare drum um, because we are a three piece band um, and, and that's something that we really focus on for our live shows too. 
Oh, I guarantee it. And congratulations by with getting a deal of pavement. That's that's big. Yeah, that's re really really big. And yeah. you got you, you have a. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. My bad. No, I just said they've been awesome to us. We've got a great team of people working around us that are working with the band and for the band that really believe in us. And it's a, it's a refreshing feeling. I, th I think it's smart. The, the, the three minute mark. I think that's smart personally. I, I you know, I, I hate cutting down songs too, but like I, I, the three minute mark, I think is a really, really smart move. I, well, in the world that we live in, everything's so fast paced. People are just scrolling on their phones and to hold somebody's attention for, any amount of time is, is challenging and there's so many talented bands out there now that can do amazing productions on their own, uh, much like what we did in their home studios. Um, so there's a lot of competition out there too. So you have to do something to stand out, but um, you do. we felt strong about the song to begin with, but it was kind of a surprise that they wanted to do that because we were expecting that we're going to be releasing new music, which we're, we're tracking and recording right now, um, which I think that's coming in early 24, but um they were pretty adamant about that. They also did say if we wanted to go with new music, that they trusted our vision just based off of the existing catalog, that it would be at least on par with what they've already heard. But so we kind of kicked it around for a week or two and it's like, you know what? Let's just roll with this. They feel good about it. It's an existing asset. Um, I don't know if I can edit it the way that it needs to be done. So that will be our deciding factor. And once I got it down, I was like, okay, I sent it back to the label, my fingers crossed. And, uh, Tim King, the head of AR, got back and, and he was really impressed with it. And I was like, all right, there's our answer. We're going that way. Don't forget, Tim King's all was also, or I guess he still is in soil. <laughs> one of my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite bands. I try not to be a fanboy about that when we do these interviews, <laughs> but yeah, that uh that came up in the very first phone call I had with him because I thought I was gonna be I, I was on so when we did this deal, um, we I, I had family travel plans every book. We go to Vegas every year in July for a week just for vacation with my wife and kids and this deal came like right that week and they were ready to go right off the bat. And I'm like, I got travel dates coming up the next two months. I'm going to need till probably September before I can get this to you guys. And he's like, all right, well we can do that. But he's like, somebody from the label is going to call you tonight. We'll go over some details. Well, I was on the phone with my bank, making sure that our cars weren't going to get blocked when we travel. Cause that's happened before. Um, and I saw this, this number come in that I knew was the label. So I'm like, shit, so I got off the phone and I called it right back thinking it was somebody else. And it was actually Tim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, is this, is this Mark? And he's like, no, this is Tim. And I'm like, Oh shit. Like this is Tim from soil. On the phone. <laughs> so that was cool. But no, he's, he's been awesome. He's, he's gone to bat for us. And I mean, to have him say anything nice about us is, is a, a gift unto itself. But yeah, the, I mean, the whole payment team has been great to us. I would probably be that way too. I'd probably be like, cause I'm a bass player. <laughs> well, and I, had, I told him too, I was like, I don't want to be a fanboy, but like, I'm a huge fan of your band. I'm a huge fan of you. And he's, I mean, he's just so chill. He's like, Oh, thanks man. He's like, that's great. He's like, but I'm excited. We got big things planned for you guys and we're excited to have you guys on board. So it's worked out well so far. <laughs> you have a full length album called broken heart syndrome. And another one that I found called St. Judas Day Parade. Is this correct? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's correct. And then um, the St. Judas Day Parade was a sophomore album. The the uh, rookie album is We All Fall Down. Well, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> so, yeah, that one came out in 2006. Oh, wow. Um, so, and then Broken Heart Syndrome has actually been done a couple different times. So it was initially released um, on an indie label in 2015. And then um, right around 2017, late 2017, early 2018, I started getting really involved in the world of sync licensing, with like TV and film and video game trailers and stuff like that. Um, and was getting a lot of attention on those songs. Um, but because of the nature of being a relationship with a label, you know, there's always questions about legal rights to who owns what. So I made the decision to re-record the whole record independently so that I had my own master that was separate and clear from that. And then because we didn't want to put out the same record and I give something new to the fans, I did acoustic versions of the whole record as well. Um, mm -hmm. So we re-released it um, as the deluxe edition, which is a double disc set that had 
the original 10 songs, um, 11 if you count the intro track, and then acoustic versions of all those songs as well. Yeah, yeah. And if you order their CD, they will sign it for you, by the way. <laughs> Let's just yep. go ahead and do that shameless plug there. Don't forget to plug all your shameless <laughs> promotions right. there that you, you can know, while we're talking. <laughs> yeah, that got, that got us in a little bit of trouble when we first posted that because I it didn't surprise me. I just didn't think about it. We had, we had some international orders where the cost to ship was worth more <laughs> than what was purchased. So um, we kind of had to tighten up the reins on how the shipping process works through our website. But yeah, if you order anything from our, our, our web store on our merch shop directly at coretunes.com, it's all right there. Um, we've got it set up now to where it's all print on demand and it's automated. So I don't even have to deal with the back end of it. Um, I, we just designed the products, the merch, the music, obviously um, it's all for sale there. And then of course, streaming everywhere, all that stuff's available too. Can we expect a vinyl run or a cassette run or? <laughs> We've talked about vinyl. Um, I got mixed feelings about it because I think it's kind of a trend that I, I see the value in it, but the cost yeah. to press vinyl is it's a lucrative adventure to get yeah. into. So. Well, not only that, that the turnaround time is just it's it takes a long time to get them once you <laughs> once you right. do pay there's, for it. There's that, and then factoring in that a lot of that stuff we're going to be selling at, at shows. Now you're talking about transporting stuff that is not, you know, easy to keep safe necessarily in a trailer with a bunch of heavy gear and yeah. guitar rigs and bass rigs and drum sets and light sets. And, you know, you could roll up and have your whole inventory destroyed in the process of getting from town to town. So um, we haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. It's a constant conversation that comes up. Um, but I think ultimately why we haven't so far is because, we haven't really had any input from fans that they wanted to go that way. Yeah. Um, I think there's still a lot of people that for whatever reason are adverse to even buying a CD, which I think yeah. is insane because I, I, I like to read the liner notes. I like to see the artwork, you know, I, like I do it. too. Yeah. To me, it's a total package, but that's also why when we redid broken heart syndrome, the deluxe edition, um, it wasn't the exact same mixes as the original record. We went in, we changed some stuff. We changed all the kick drum and snare drum tones. Um, went in, changed EQ and compression on all the bass guitar tracks so that it's a much punchier, more in your face mix. And then, like I said, like none of these songs were ever intended to be acoustic. So it was kind of a challenge I put on myself. I mean, nobody else did it because I just wanted to see if I could do it. Um, but when we released it, we got a lot of press and stuff where people were almost more drawn to the acoustic versions of the songs than the full band. Um, because some of them I had to change the, the tempo um, just to translate to acoustic. And some of them I changed the arrangement a little bit, too. But um, it was all a good time. I'm glad we did it. And it uh, it's definitely time for new music. I mean, that was in basically 2020. Um, came out on Black Friday, uh, 2019, which is an awful day to release a record as we found out the hard way. Oh. Well, because you're competing with everybody yeah. else in the music space, but you live and you learn. So, um, and then the plan was to tour that into the ground. And then we all know what happened in March of 2020. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it... But, but here we are now in 2023 and we're still getting traction off of that record and with, with daydream junkie, you know, so it was all worth it in the long run. Well, that's what happens when it's a great song. <laughs> Speaking of great songs, since it is my show, I get to pick out a I pick out a song that we're going to talk about. Uh, my favorite song, and it's "You're You're So Fake" because I love your bass player. Because I'm a bass player. <laughs> that, off, that's off, a of Saint, off of Saint Jude's Day Parade. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an awesome song. Um, we haven't had that in a set list for a little bit. Um, it's one of the ones that we wrote. We always, the problem we have a set list is that we know that there's probably five or six songs that are going to probably be in every set that we play, depending on time, obviously. So if we're doing an opening slot, we're only getting 35 minutes. That limits what that rotating yeah. songs can be. So, but yeah, that's definitely one that's always in there. That's a blast to play live. Um, yeah, I mean, we love that record. We still play probably at least a third of our show is still songs from that record. Well, you got a hell of a bass player, but like, uh, like I already said, you three-piece band, you guys better be on your game. 
<laughs> you better, better be good. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't realize how hard a three piece is, man. It's like, it, well, they don't. But the other thing that I always approach it as too is that, like a lot of the bands that we look up to, that we idolize, and that we've been lucky enough to get to play with a lot of them, there might be four members in the band, but it's only three instruments and a vocalist. Right. Yeah. Now that being said, since I am the guy that does both of those, that's not as difficult as what I'm tasked with, but. Um, but I mean, from a musicality standpoint, it's the same amount of ingredients. You know, if you're, yeah. if, if you're making a song, you know, per se. But um, yeah, it's something we're very aware of. Um, and how we approach songs live sometimes is a little bit different than the recorded versions for that very reason, because we want to keep the energy up. I mean, like, not so much on You're So Fake, but there's a song on that same record called live forever that we play every show we've ever done since the inception of that song. And on the record, I overdub um, the guitars coming out of that first chorus into the next verse. Cause there's a, a clean channel uh, guitar part where the vocal comes in for that second verse, but the dirty guitars from the chorus still ring out over the top. So obviously we can't do that live with right. the guitar on stage. So um, I, I came up with some cool stuff that we do live that, that we all like so much now if we had if i had thought of that then we would have recorded it the way that we play it live but um yeah i mean there it's it's a real problem to to have to deal with but i feel like we do it pretty well no i don't think you have a problem at all with it <laughs> and i don't just from a personal standpoint i don't want to hear necessarily the record when i see a band live I want to yeah. hear. I want to hear the, the live performance. I want to hear. I, I like it to be a little different. I like it. You know, I like it. I, I, yeah, that's that's. We talk about that every show, every rehearsal. I mean, and we rehearse spots in our show too, where maybe we're not just going bang out one song after another and then talk and bang out one song after another and talk. And um, like our favorite bands, our favorite shows are are just that. They're shows like there's a pageantry to it and you can tell that it's been rehearsed like that. Um, so we'll have musical interludes from song to song that we rehearse prior to show that maybe aren't part of the next song, but it's the transition to the next song. Yeah. Um, and that's all part of it too. Cause we don't want to go up there and play exactly what the record is. That's boring. You can just sit at home and do that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, we got a real high energy live show and Arthur, our bass player, like, I can't believe he doesn't snap his neck every time we play. Cause he's just a wild man. But, uh, <laughs> that's all that's all good though that's all part of it too you don't have the you don't have the calm down bass player pedal to step on. <laughs> no i wish i had a mute bass player pedal i could do that <laughs> he's got a tendency to uh to play really really loud but i think with with these like we just had a, a date on sunday night with trapped um and it was a club show uh so for that one we didn't even bring amps we just brought our um i have a line six helix and he has a camper profiler. Um, so that's the first time I've ever played a show without an amp. Um, but we've got an in-ear monitor system too. So there's my mute button. Like if he's too loud, I can just go over and turn him down in my mix and I don't have to deal with it. But, um, but yeah, he's, no, he's awesome. Yeah, he is really good. <laughs> All right. You have, by the time this show airs, you have a show basically tomorrow night that you wanted to tell me about um actually it's two it's two two weeks from today actually right but when the um, show airs it'll it'll be tomorrow <laughs> oh that's right you're right um so we start a tour with texas hippie coalition on the 15th um of november uh we start in destin florida which is absolutely gorgeous i've never been there before but i'd never even heard of the city before we got picked up for this tour but uh it's like right up there by the Gulf of Mexico, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's gorgeous. So we've got that date with them. And then we are in uh, Sanford, Florida on the 17th. And then we are in Palm Bay, Florida on the 19th. And what about New Year's Eve? We're yeah, that's another huge one that just got announced last week. So um, we're Seven Dust has taken us out uh, with 10 years. Um, and we are in Illinois on the, uh, Bloomington, Illinois, on the 28th and 29th. And then on the 30th, we are in, I think it's called Moline, Illinois. 
or Jolene, Illinois, something like that. Yeah, probably um, Jolene. There you go. Probably. And then on New Year's Eve, we're at the Epic Event Center in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Awesome, man. So, closing out on a strong note. 